It is time for something that I haven't done in a couple of weeks. It's time for a best of three series in StarCraft 2. And what I got for you today is a Zerg versus Terran. Spawning in the bottom right corner, playing with the red Zerg pieces in game number one. He goes by the nickname of Mr. Creative, but in game he's known as Team Liquid's TLO. And his opponent spawning on the other end of the map, playing with the blue Terran pieces. He goes by the nickname of Team Liquid's Euthermo, or in the game, he goes by the nickname of Liquid Thermi. Now, I've always guessed at the very least that the only reason why he goes by the name of Liquid Thermi in-game is because of the character limit when you try to rename your account or whenever you're trying to get a new account. But regardless, Euthermal versus TLO. Now, both of these guys are going indeed by the Liquid tags, which means that they are indeed teammates. So besides practicing together, which they undoubtedly do, they will also be discussing the game quite a bit. And generally speaking, whenever they play like a series of games, right, that immediately means as well that they will have some sort of like meta game going on, some sort of mind games happening that we can't quite see. Now, I know very, uh, very well that, like, um, Team Liquid has been putting up some boot camps all throughout Europe, or at the very least, they had one recently in the Netherlands as well. Actually, quite nearby my place, but regardless, um, both of these guys will have been discussing strategy over there, I am certain. But TLO, like I was just about to say, he is known as Mr. Creative. And the reason for that is that, in particular, in Best of 3 and Best of 5 series, he loves going for something a little bit crazy, and at the very least, one of the matches. And apparently, in this one, he goes for a pool first, goes for an expansion, double gasses, and then we indeed see that Roach Warren go down here as well. Now, this is all gonna come down to the control and the scout right now of the Terran player in blue. Cause Euthermo will have to defend against quite an aggressive opener here from TLO as he's gonna try and do as much damage as he possibly can. The first set of Zerglings already making their way across the map here as well. Reaper should be popping out shortly, but there is already a factory on the way here too. Now Euthermal, definitely no stranger to tra crazy strategies himself, but generally speaking, when he feels like he's going up against a very good opponent, actually nice little dodge there with the Lynx, wow, did you see that? That was such a cute little move. Apparently now the Lynx will be able to nibble away at this command center, that's a very big deal, that may very well force the cancel. But regardless, while Euthermal is definitely not afraid of going for some crazy strategies himself, Generally speaking, he will be playing reasonably straight up with a bio-focused army. He loves going for his Marine Marauder Medivac with a mind sort of composition. And actually, the Reaper right now manages to get across the map. Really smart move there. I personally probably, right, if I would have been in the scenario where the Zerklings randomly started attacking the SCV on the low ground, I probably would have pulled that single Reaper back. But Euthermal there, making the correct decision, decides to scout out exactly what's going on. And with that, you will now have time to defend against everything. The command center is being rebuilt right now in the main base of Euthermal, but at the same time, he's got a factory with a tech lab already ready to go, as well as a reactor on those barracks. So that does indeed mean that there will be two marines being produced at a time, as well as a siege tank, and that's very important. Now, of course, we did see the double gases, right? So I'm sure that TLO, and while he did pull some drones out of the gas here, he's still got a lot of it saved up. Yeah, indeed, he's going to be going for a bunch of ravagers here, which does mean that the siege tank will need to be careful. Siege tanks do incredible amounts of damage to roaches and armored units in general, but of course if it's sieged up, it can very easily be taken care of, and beautiful corrosive biles there as well, landing them right in between those buildings will make both of them burn here very, very shortly, but the siege tank is out now, nice move here, not sieging it up right from the get-go, just simply leaving it as an un tank, but still, this is going to be a tough defense, because there are a lot of zerg units here at the front door already, SCV's not capable of defending against those ravagers here in time, and all of a sudden, a lot of them will be forced to start falling here as well. And TLO picking up a massive lead here in the earlier stages of the game. A beautiful surround. Wow, look at that. That was insane. Nice micro here back as well. Forcing the Ravagers to move around and actually eat their own corrosive biles. Euthermal made the best of a bad situation. Now, there are still apparently a few units moving across the map. Although, I highly doubt that these drones were meant to be sacrificed for the Zerg God. No, they, they do indeed decide to turn around here after all. But it looks like we've got an aggressive opener here to this best of three series. And apparently, actually, there's a rally point here somewhere off. I guess TLO has realized it by now, but still, a bunch of drones have decided to move across the map. 
The SUV that was originally building the command center on the low ground apparently has made its way across the map here as well and it's just being a bit of a pain. This is quite a big deal because there's only a single road shot right now but in many instances the Zerg player will not have any units at this point in time but eventually that uh, depot does indeed get, uh, get cancelled here too and the third base expansion will be taken here very very shortly. Now I wonder, what do both of these players have got in store for the remainder of this game? Because if you're the Terran player, right, you're kind of in a weird situation. You know that your Zerg opponent could potentially be taking a third base, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be making a lot of workers here either. Of course, your Thermal, though, is still very good with his Siege Tank and Bio Control. He's going to try and see what he can do. There is also a single Medivac out that I think he may very well be looking to Siege up here. Very much so, yeah, below the ramp, exactly. That's what he's going to try and do. And with that high ground vision of the Medivac, I believe you should be able to shoot away at this southernmost or this northernmost um, like mineral patch. And indeed, it seems like that is going to be the case. Uh, TLO already moving backwards with some of the units. There is, of course, now also a Ravager still available, and it will be able to land a single bile. But regardless, this is still going to be painful, as Zerg will not be able to mine with a reasonably substantial amount of the drones. While once again, oh my god, he's actually going to leapfrog some of the units here as well. That's a beautiful move. But while once again, Zerg is going to be under pressure, I think there will be enough defenses here at the very least for the time being to shoo away all of those units. But still, he's losing quite a lot of units here in the process too. A single randomly placed spine crawler, at the very least seemingly randomly placed, decides to poke away at a few of those marines as well. And it turns out that... Considering the scenario that TLO was in, this was a pretty much spot-on defense. He did end up losing a couple of workers here, but definitely nothing too, too terrible. At the very least, actually, he only lost a single one. That's, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. Now, Liquid Thermal, right? When it comes to, like, his standard go-to strategy in Zerg vs. Terran, he focuses on Marines and Medivacs mostly. He's really good at the drop-based play, but apparently, uh, TLO is feeling confident enough to move across the map here as well. There is a Liberator ready to defend against this uh, rock formation here, as well as a bunch of the depots, as well as a Siege Tank on the low ground. So I don't exactly know if Zerg is going to be able to move on uh, up to that ramp. I highly doubt it. It looks like, for the time being, at the very least, the drop has been shut down and Zerk will try and move around here. There is also finally a lair going down at the 7 minute mark, which is most definitely very late on into this match. But I wonder, will Zerk really be able to do a whole lot? A double engineering bay block here as well. Bayou Thermal will be able to get a nice little block in here. Although Zerk should be able to shut this down here for the time being. I highly doubt that TLO wants to push on through here. Of course, he does have enough here to land the corrosive biles on that Liberator and potentially on the Siege Tank too. And actually, maybe a single set of biles could potentially take out both of these but you still need to be able to have the guts here to move onwards and even at that point in time I think there are enough marines here on the low ground as well as a potential siege tank on the high ground here very shortly to defend against any kind of damage. At the same time, though, the Zerg player in red has secured himself a fourth base location, as well as a reasonable economy. I mean, right now, it's 52 versus 39 Harvesters, which is very, very solid. At the same time, though, Terran is trying to secure himself that third base location. Stimpak, not quite done just yet, so that does indeed mean that Euthermal will not be able to chase down those units very, very easily. Apparently, a single Ravager, though, trying to, oh man, join his brethren as well, but he will be floating to the surface. Now, here's the thing about this match right now, right? While all of the aggression was going on, all of a sudden, Terran player in blue here, U Thermal, is going to be able to play his kind of style. Very shortly, he will be ramping up the Terran production, and he's already got himself a very solid amount of defenses here. I don't think this, this aggression here from TLO will do all too much. Look at the amount of Marines here. Finishing up Stimpak here as well. Beautiful stutter stepping backwards here, kiting around those corrosive bios. But what I was trying to say there is that very shortly, Euthermo is getting towards his sweet spot. The type of game that he really likes to play. And that is to be really aggressive with all of the drops. And generally speaking, that happens when Zerk is forced back home. And apparently, that is going to be right now. Euthermo recognizing indeed that he's got the army upper hand. He's got a solid amount of upgrades here as well. He's researching his combat shield, but he's getting rid of a lot of those Zerk units. And indeed, immediately, right? He does this every single time. Immediately, as soon as he secures himself a little bit of leeway and a little bit of wiggle room, he picks up with his Metavex and he starts dropping all over the place. Of course, though, Zerk knows about this too. He 
he's going for the counter attack and actually maybe Euthermo has overextended here because the siege tanks at the front are already falling and while the supply counts are looking much more even like they were earlier on into this match still this is looking a little bit scary fourth base right there or actually that was the fifth base location for the zerg will get forced to cancel and while the terran player has not quite defended against the aggression just yet and while tlo is indeed defending here very nicely against the drops this is still though euthermal's terrain this is the type of game that he loves playing and it's always it's it's always the type of style that i'm always terrified to play against when i am playing uh with these zerg pieces myself against the terran player that is very very good at this drop based style it looks like though tlo not quite done yet with the aggression whatsoever he's gonna continue pushing here for the remainder of this game i wouldn't be surprised because he's already set himself up for a reasonably good economy and starting to drone here i mean he's making a few drones here but i don't think he's gonna be able to get away with all too too many at this point the terran player has got so much economy that you will need to defend against all of their aggression and I wonder if roaches and zerklings will be enough to defend against this. I'm, I'm starting to wonder here if there, you know, shouldn't be a need here for... Oh my god, that stutter stepping is beautiful. Uh, but regardless, I, I'm starting to wonder here if there's not a need for, like, splash damage. There is indeed now also an in infestation pit being added on, so infestors may very well join this battle very shortly. But the newly acquired fifth here will be forced to cancel here once more. And Euthermal is on the prowl. He's trying to do as much damage as he possibly can couple of drones once more end up falling here dodging those corrosive bios at the very least that first one second one also indeed being dodged and while a single medevac does end up falling it looks like the remainder of them will be able to get on out of there with relative ease but look at that right while the supply counts were heavily in favor of zerk here for the earlier stages of the game the mules just simply have started kicking in, right? That three-base economy here for the Terran has started kicking in. And with that, a ton of units can indeed be produced. And the longer this goes on, because Zerk will have to do something, the longer this goes on, the more heavily it will look in favor here of the Terran player in blue. It looks like once more, the siege tanks have made their way across the map. And I think he may be looking once again to abuse the low ground to high ground advantages to really, like, get those maximum range or get the maximum range rather out of those siege tanks to do as much damage as he can at the same time a dropship has made its way to the natural this one will be shut down quite easily but also the fourth base is gonna be in some trouble a single medevac unloading here with marines to try and shoo away as much as he possibly can while leaving the remainder here of the terran force on the low ground to potentially defend against the, all of the aggression here that the zerg will try and deal to this army at the same time though a bunch of reinforcing marines and marauders with a few medevacs as well have made their way towards the natural and the fourth base is on trouble the third will be able to uh, be i guess defended here for the time being but a lot of drones are falling in the natural the hive is also being built here so that may be under threat here very shortly and while it looks like zerk will be able to defend against the siege tanks here with that fourth just barely staying alive the critical mass and the critical damage here has already been dealt tlo is losing a ton of his economy and while sure he may be able to shoo away a lot of the units here for the time being the terran reinforcements have arrived and tlo knows it he knows he won't be able to defend against the terran onslaught and he's forced to gg out of game number one Beautiful game number one though by you thermal just simply defending against the zerk aggression in the earlier stages of the game Absolutely brilliantly and while he didn't really take any economy damage, right? And he established himself that third base He was just able to start doing you thermal things Which means that he loads a bunch of Marines into Metavex and he drops them all over the map And he starts being an absolute pain in the ass to his opponent and you know after he managed to uh, pick up that victory I think he must feel pretty confident right here in game number two because game number one went half heavily in his favor after defending all of the aggression. Still though, that was a nil-biting game. That was awesome. Spotting in the top left corner for one of Grand's Ellie, we've got the Terran player that's currently up 1-0. He's known as Euthermal. And his opponent spawning on the other end of the map in cross positions, which I guess uh, TLO must be pretty happy about. He goes by the nickname of Team Liquid's TLO. Now, I have, made, um, I have made videos of both of these players in the past as well, right? And I've seen someone ask, what does TLO stand for? Because a lot of these professional gamers have got nicknames that are sort of like abbreviations, I suppose. For TLO's story, it's actually pretty funny. Um, I remember him playing with the nickname The Little One. 
back uh, during the Wings of Liberty era, he was just simply going by the nickname of The Little One, which apparently is what TLO stands for. Now, after joining Team Liquid, which he has been on like for many, many years right now, um, he switched to TLO as well, I believe. But apparently, he's got an older brother that goes by the nickname of TBO. And I guess you can guess what the B stands for. Regardless, though, we got a much more standard build order or build order right now from TLO, going for that quick expansion here on the low ground instead of taking the in base one first. He goes for the low ground one, which generally speaking is just easier with the creep spread. Because like I said, this map is absolutely enormous. If you have a quick look right now at the uh, map layout, right? So we got the main base here for Zerk. We got his low ground expansion. We have the in base expansion. But then interestingly enough, while this is a four player map, there is a watchtower in each of the corners. And this watchtower actually hits enough bases to check out this one over here. To check out the one here north of it too, as well as apparently the one on the east right now, which is the close expansion for TLO. But generally speaking, this is one of the maps where you can actually establish up to like 5-6 bases reasonably easily, uh, with your 5th or your 6th one being a gold base expo as well. That in the earlier stages of the game will indeed be blocked with rocks, but later on of course players can indeed clean these up to start taking the expansion right there as well and start mining those valuable golden mineral patches. Euthermal going for a bit of an old school build here that has become a lot more popular as of late. I think he's going to go for a starport very shortly. Uh, this has been something that a lot of uh, a lot of Terran players have been favoring as of late. Yeah, look at that. Basically, this used to be a strategy that was super common back in the day. You go for reacted Hellions and then you go for a bunch of Banshee play too. It's funny how strategies loop back around because I wouldn't be surprised if we see a tech lab here very, very shortly on that barracks. Although he will have to construct it here very shortly if he plans on switching those over. There we indeed we do see it. Regardless... Uh, this is one of those strategies that just simply becomes a bit more popular again over the course of time. It's funny how that works, because strategies have sort of like... You know, they're sort of like fashionable, I suppose, right? Some strategies are just simply more fashionable right now as they were a couple of months ago. And, you know, players have always come up with new reasons why a new strategy is better or why old strategy is good as well. It's funny to see that flip around, but I remember play people playing this a couple of years ago very, very efficiently. I wonder, though, is he going to go for a very quick cloak upgrade here as well? Or will he just simply be making a bench here? Or maybe he could even decide to not go benches whatsoever. And actually, wow, you thermal while he was saving up gas which is why I was wondering if he decided to go for uh, maybe even the cloaking field. He's decided to start building up quite a bunch of cyclones there too, which do a lot of damage to buildings. So we'll see exactly what he's going to be able to do with that. Gets a creep tuber kill there very, very nicely. Second creep tuber kill, uh, just barely not getting that one. He will be able to uh, cancel that, the Zerg player that is. This is actually kind of cool, right? Back in the day, the Hellions were made to start killing a lot of drones. Instead, nowadays, they are more often being used to deny creep spread instead which is kind of a funny funny loop around but creep spread has become such an important opponent or um, you know component rather for zerk in this matchup that you know denying that for even just a minute or so is very very significant Banshee is being built here eventually. We do also see that cloaking research right now. And there is also spores already. There are already spores here ready to go and defend against it. I guess TLO managed to get a scout up in there. So he will be able to figure out exactly what's going on. And on top of that, TLO has got the spine crawler here at the front too. So apparently that makes him confident enough to start creating more and more workers. Now, we all know, in a game of drones, you win or you die, right? And you need to get a lot of them out. But if that does mean that you're going to be vulnerable against all of these units here at the front door, you got to be extremely careful, because Zerklings alone, with that bailing nest about to finish up here, is not going to be enough. I mean, you're going to need more queens, you're going to need more Zerklings, or at the very least, a bunch of bailings, because these units will be able to do a substantial amount of damage. While I do like the droning there, the skipping of the Roach Warren may have been a little bit too greedy. A few banes, or at least a single single bane is currently being morphed in no real workers though have been taken care of just yet solid defense here by tlo for the time being at the very least but still this is going to be an important one he's actually starting up drones once again i'm feeling apparently he's feeling confident that is insane he's starting up drones here when he's got nothing like whoa what the no way how did he just do that i actually assumed he would be taking a massive hit there but even though he ran his opponent around there for a long time, right, and he bought himself so much time, somehow, some way, he managed to clean up Hellbats with basically Zerklings and Queens alone. That was insane. That was, like, that was beautiful. I don't even know how he managed to do that. That was sick. I should not attempt that. No, I'm thinking about it right now. 
you probably, unless you're, you know, a really high level Zerg player, you probably should not attempt to do that either, because that is such a difficult thing to do. If you mess that up for even a split second, right, the Hellbats will roast Zerglings for days. Now, TLO has managed to get him, uh, his way on the other end of the map. He will be able to figure out, indeed, that the third command center is already just about to finish up. And with that, a ton more production is being added on here as well. A bunch of uh, EVO chambers are built now, too. Actually, there's three of them in total. A fourth one being added on here. I wonder if these ones here at the front are maybe mostly just side blockers. Or if he actually is going for the triple research here. Regardless, this may just be a bit of a misclick here uh, from TLO as well, of course. Because he's human after all. I know it's hard to uh, remember that sometimes, but he is a human being, which does mean that indeed he will be able to cancel that last one. And I wonder if he's going to go for the third upgrade here as well. It looks like, nope, that is not going to be the case. And both players are trying to, uh, you know, start building up a reasonably big army. Now, supply-wise, right? While it is looking even, this is the kind of stage that a Terran player wants to, generally speaking, be ahead at. Because usually Zerg will be able to get a very nice lead when it comes to the supply counts at this point in the game. And it looks like in this one, it's reasonably even, which usually means that Terran is going to be ahead, regardless of the units that he's got. A lot of these Benchies, by the way, has got a bunch of kills here already. I actually missed them dealing some damage. That must have been around the same time that the Hellions were pushing in here as well. Uh, they uh, did not really get up any kills, though. So I guess they must have just been simply a bunch of Zerklings here. Regardless, they will be trying to make their loop around the main base here. Once again, a few drones will end up falling, which actually is kind of a painful, uh, painful deal here for the Zerg player in red. And actually, these uh, these Banshees will be able to do a little bit more damage because as it is right now, the first Overseer is only just now being morphed in. Banshees, however, moving around very aggressively. One of them is running very low and will die very easily once the Queens once again pick up the uh, detection, of course, and once they are able to start hitting these units again. And I think, yep, indeed, the first Banshee, at the very least, will start and, yeah, it will end up falling. And a second one here as well. I guess he just simply decided to sacrifice them while opening up the potential here for the Liberators on the other end of the map. Generally speaking, Banshees, the longer the game goes on, the more difficult they, they become here to control as well. But... Terran has got a really menacing army here already, and once again, right, we see Euthermal doing Euthermal things. His macro is on point, he's producing a lot of units, and supply-wise, he's magically all of a sudden 22 supply ahead of his opponent. And that does mean that, besides the Liberator aggression, he's gonna be able to start doing his drop shenanigans once again as well. There are a lot of reinforcing Terran units now as well, he's producing a ton of stuff. So, very shortly, I mean, we see that never-ending Terran train move across the map once again. Now, there are enough defenses here, at the very least, to go ahead and defend against the initial aggression here. We do also have a few Infestors joining this battle now, too. So, there are Banelings as well as uh, Infestors ready to go to deal a lot of that splash damage. But I wonder, is there just simply not enough Terran here to close out this game? There are just simply so many units here already. Nice control there once again, dodging behind that little uh, nuke, I suppose, behind the extract. And a lot of these units are trading super efficiently, but these Banelings will be able to clean up those units at the very least for the time being. At the same time, though, the Euthermal uh, reinforcements have arrived on the other man end of the map, too. And while there are a few Liberators here in the high ground, and apparently, once again, that Fungal will be very nice, too, still, this is not looking that great here for the Zerg player in red. A lot of units ended up falling. And look at the Terran train, right? This is what we're talking about when we're talking about the never-ending push. Zerg will have a tough time joining up here because Terran will just simply continuously move across the map. Moving across, trying to do whatever damage he can. And while this single Widow Mine will not be able to do a whole lot, the creep threat will slowly start falling here. And slowly will all of these Zerg units start eating the damage here too. And look at this, right? There's just simply so much Terran here. Look at the minimap. More and more of it is moving across here as well. And there are so many reinforcements ready to join this battle too. Brilliant control here. The splits are immaculate. Really not losing any clumps of marines there to a handful of Banelings. The infestors will end up falling. And I think with just simply superior play here, Euthermal will be able to close out this series with a 2-0 fashion. Beautiful move there by him, well-deserved victory, and I do hope that you guys enjoyed watching this series. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below, and if you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a notification as soon as I upload more. Other than that, I want to thank you for watching, have an amazing day, do not forget to smile alright, and I will see you in the next one.